everybody dreams of traveling. All of us can dream, but only a few get the chance to travel to faraway places. Yet, anyone can get a taste of traveling around the world in the one place where the world's nations sit side by side, New York City. Wanderlust is a word that derives from German and it means the powerful impulse to travel. So it has very strong links to European Romanticism, which was a tradition Cornell was interested in. And of course, his own travels were really just between the suburb of Queens where he lived and Manhattan and sometimes uh, little rural trips on his bicycle to nearby Flushing. But he, he was very much anchored at Utopia Parkway, which is the street on which he lived. But of course it was when he went into Manhattan and collected objects that he, this was his form of travel. He was um, even known to describe himself as an armchair voyager, which again is a phrase that links back to 19th century traditions um, of travel logs that were published and guides. And these were all the sort of pieces of out of date ephemera that he was collecting in New York. In many ways, he's kind of taking the grand tour in his own mind's eye. He loved to collect things like other motifs of travel, like postage stamps and maps, charts, even hotel advertisements for places that he was never going to go. So he loved the romance and the idea of travel. In an odd way, this kind of imaginary form of travel was almost the most practical to him. He was wanting to be at home and look after his brother and mother, that was something he was committed to doing and, you know, his imagination filled in all the details. Why bother to go to the trouble to visit another place when actually he could go there any time he liked in his imagination? And one also suspects that the archive of materials and ephemera that he was building up and also the great number of artworks that he was making was a collection of things that he felt very much attached to and that he probably didn't want to leave. So in some ways the fact that he never travelled anywhere is really a statement for the primacy of the imagination, but what sort of started as an interest in these romantic foreign places actually comes to be more of an artistic concept for him. This idea of voyaging is very much present in his work as well as his diaries and his notes. In some ways, even the very format of the shadow box enacts that sort of tension because you're, it's not unlike peering in through a telescope or you're looking into a distant world that's sort of present in front of you but somehow separated by the screen of the glass. 